Hey, how's it going everybody? Ramon here, back at you with a <laughs> new episode of Meet the Photographer. I'm super excited today. Uh, we got Noe in the house <laughs> and uh, I'm going to introduce you guys to her and we're going to hear her origin story, how she got into water photography and surf photography. So, Noe, the uh, floor is yours. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Noe. I'm born and raised in Kali, uh, Kali Oahu. Um, Grew up pretty much in the ocean, around the ocean, doing camping, fishing, pretty much just anything. Uh, surfing was not something I did because nobody in my family surfed, but just being connected to the ocean through other ways my whole life. I'm like that one person in my family that always has to have the ocean in my life. Um, but yeah, other than that, fishing was a big part of my life. Uh, was my main hobby all the way up until I picked up a camera, which is really strange, but Yeah uh, That's pretty much What I've done so years ago I used to work at a retail store and For Black Friday, I would always notice people like lining up in the electronics department or whatever it was and we would always sell these like kits, right? It was like the camera and two lenses and I always wondered like, what are people doing with it? So that kind of never really materialized until way later. And then uh, maybe, what is this? 2019, so right before COVID, um, I would tell my friends like, I wonder if I would pick up a camera, like, because a lot of my friends have kids, like young kids. So I figured like we do trips, we, you know, do things together to yeah. capture memories, right? Yeah. So they were like, oh yeah, you know, whatever. I would tell my family and they'll be like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. But not like, it was just something I talked about. Right. So finally the Christmas, 2019 Christmas, I told my mom, hey, let's go to Costco. I want to go check out the cameras. Yeah. So we went to Costco and they had, sure enough, they had the kits. It was $500 for two lenses and the body. It was a Canon Rebel, the T7. And I just pulled the trigger. I just was like, I can buy it because Costco has a good return policy. Yeah. <laughs> and if I, cause I honestly didn't think I would do anything with it. Right. It was just kind of in my head. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Yeah. So I bought it and I think it stayed in the box until like February of 2020. So right, right before COVID. Yeah. And I, I was like, didn't know what ISO was. I didn't know anything. So I took it out of the box finally. I went hiking with a friend. We went to the Makapu Lighthouse Trail. Yeah. And I took the camera with me and I took photos. Didn't even know what I was doing. It looked horrible, blown out, you know, whatever. So I did that like two weekends in a row, I think. I did that trail and I took the camera. But the second weekend on the way home, I pulled over at Sandy's because the kit comes with a long, like a telephoto lens, right? right? Yeah. Whatever it is. So I was like, oh, let me just go stop. And so I reversed my truck and I was sitting in the back of my truck and taking photos. Didn't really know what was happening, you know, because I never bodyboarded. Sandy's was never really somewhere I went mm -hmm. when I was like in high school. Yeah. Because I was scared, you know, like it's a short break. It's heavy. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that day that I pulled over at Sandy's just kind of like, I kept on going back like on my days off I would go but getting into the water with a camera was never on my mind right so I've always had a GoPro but like I knew of like the Clark Littles and Zach Noyles like but I don't think it really clicked to how they were getting in the water with the camera yeah <laughs> you know like because I didn't really know so the more I went to Sandy's the more I would meet you know certain people and I kind of fell into a really good group of guys that kind of just took me in I guess you could say and one of them kind of brought it up that hey you should jump in the water with us with your GoPro and I was like but I don't know what I'm doing I don't know where to sit I don't like at that time I didn't even know like what the proper way to enter the water was or to exit right like a shore break spot you know like i didn't really know like i grew up knowing to respect the ocean of course but to actually get in there and do something more than just swim like i had no idea yeah 
So that's when the GoPro came into play and I decided to go in one day. And this is like when the beaches had shut down. So the only way you could get into the water was if you were in the water, right? So you couldn't go to the beach and sit on the sand. You couldn't even park in the parking lot. So I decided to go in with the guys one day and it was probably the worst day that we chose to go out because it was rainy. It was messy. <laughs> it was like way too big for someone who didn't know what they were doing. Right. And here I go just, and as soon as I got in, I got sucked out. <laughs> wow. And I was like, oh no, like what? It, and, but they were watching me the whole time. Okay, cool. So like they made sure I was okay. They, so I, I guess it's like pride. You don't want to say you need help. Right, exactly. You know? But like I knew like rip currents, you know, what not to do, what to do. So I, I made my way back in and I was, I told him like, hey, I think I got to go in. Like this is not, like I'm scared. Right, You yeah. know, like it's not for me right now. Like this, these conditions are not what I should be in right. for my first time. So, so that day, that was that. And for some reason, I just kept on going back. So it was just a GoPro for a little bit. And then I think it was like ending of March, early April 2020, that one of the guys that I would hang out with kind of mentioned the whole housing thing. But at the time that Canon Rebel, they don't make housing because it's such an entry level camera for it. Yeah. I would have had to go like completely custom, which would have took way too long. And, you know, so that's so that was my first camera. Then I started looking into other options and I ended up getting a Sony A6000, which is just a cheap, you know, crop sensor camera and so I went from that to mirrorless and I got a salty surf housing that was my first housing at the time because it was affordable it was like the housing and two ports for under like a thousand dollars so I was like if I'm gonna go in I'm, I'm gonna do it you know like yeah full on so exactly I did it I ordered it I sold the Canon and the lenses to kind of make up for it and then um, I would, so while I was waiting for the housing, I would like look on YouTube, you know, like surf photography, just any kind of info or like advice I could get. Um, of course, like learning the settings and because shooting in the water versus shooting just like on land is so different. Totally different. Settings are different. Composition is different. Like right. you're constantly moving. You're fighting the current. Right. You have you're trying not to get awareness. pounded, you exactly. know, like there's so many things going on. So. There was one guy that I found on YouTube from Australia, actually, who was a surf photographer and his channel really like helped just to kind of like the beginning part of it, give me an idea of what I can do or, you know, so, so my first session with the new housing, like full camera setup in the water was like ending of April, 2020. So we were still in cold during COVID. So I've only been shooting since pretty much April 2020. Wow, your shots are amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Like, it, it's been a, I never thought it would get to what it was, but the process to learning it all was pretty crazy, pretty fun. It's the people you meet, you know, it's, so yeah, April 2020, that was my first session at Sandy's with a housing and I was so, it was like not even two feet, I think. It was a nice day. It was like dead winds, the water was clean, you know, small barrels, good, perfect for someone who's learning. But I was so scared, like that one foot wave looked like five feet, you know, like for somebody that don't know, like, right. but my friend who came with me, like he was super helpful. You know, he, he kind of showed me like where to sit when the wave breaks, you know, where not to be, where to be. Um, so yeah, that kind of just snowballed from April till now and, um, I honestly only thought I was going to shoot shore break. Why? I don't know. <laughs> because a lot of my friends and my, like my mom, them were like, what are you doing? Like, are you you're okay? You're safe. Like, don't get hurt, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, shore break was pretty much what I shot for a while, which I think is good in a sense that it taught me how to get close to somebody or close to the wave right. or you know, how to get out of the way or whatever it may be. Um, and then after that, 
I didn't start shooting surf until probably the ending of that summer. So 2020 ending. And Les was actually the one who got me to go shoot at canoes. And like I would, he would invite me all the time and I'd be like, yeah, I don't know, you know, like, I don't know if I want to shoot surf. Like, I didn't know anything about surfing. Right, yeah. Let alone longboarding, you know? So it's like, yeah, maybe, you know? But finally I made it out with him and that first like two or three sessions I went out and, and shot with him kind of just Sealed got me the hooked. Deal. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like it, it just, changed something and I've been shooting in Waikiki ever since um and short break I still shoot short break but and I've that's how I met a lot of the surfers right. you know um through him and I didn't start shooting queens until later and I think I went like I would always see queens when I was at canoes you know like I would watch but I was kind of intimidated because I knew that was like the spot the spot right you know like that's where everybody goes to surf and the photographers are out there so yeah i didn't i didn't really get out there till later and once i did though i kind of like never looked back, Look back <laughs> at right. canoes i mean i would go here and there <laughs> but yeah queens is is definitely magic like yeah. it's such a crazy place like the talent there is just crazy and that's where like my love for longboarding really like kind of took off and i think it's the same for a lot of people who finally get out there you know yeah so yeah i mean that's where i met everybody surfers other photographers um, i i learned a lot from myself out there because prior to that i would never swim out to a break or you know like and i also had to learn where to sit where not to be don't get in the surfers ways because now you're talking about a longboard you know versus just a short you know like you can so yeah it, it it was really it really changed my outlook on photography and it made me want to keep going back right you know like after i would go home and look at the pictures and be like oh i want to get this or that next time so yeah it's been an addiction ever since i think awesome. <laughs> Have you ever looked at yourself as being possibly a role model? Because there really aren't that many wahine that shoot in the water. Um, it's crossed my mind. And I think there's been other people that have brought it up, like surfers, surfer wise, like especially female surfers, you know, that there really isn't too much. There isn't. And yeah. even like shooting at Sandy's, people would be like, you know, what are you doing? Out yeah, there? who is she? Like, yeah. who are you? <laughs> but. And I think, I think for the most part, it was more like they wanted to make sure I was okay or like I knew what I was doing so I wouldn't get hurt. Yeah, yeah. Don't underestimate yeah. me. Don't judge me thinking I'm but like, yeah. Most of the times when I would shoot there, it would be with the crew. So, awesome. you know, but yeah, I think there should be a lot more female photographers yeah. out there, whether it's in the shore break or surf, you know, whatever. There, there should definitely be more. Awesome. So... Cool. It's really cool hearing about your origin story. Uh, so what are some of your most epic shots you've gotten so far uh, that you can think of? There was one that I got last winter out west of a uh, shore break. It was actually a bodyboarder. I was kind of farther away, but it was just like... The perfect morning when lighting was just epic. The color of the wave was just super blue. You could see the lines in the wave and the way the bodyboarder was positioned, he was already like kind of in the tube. Yeah. But it wasn't a complete cover up, which is kind of what I like. Like I like seeing them like kind of at the bottom making that turn. So I, and the background and everything just, it's just my one of my favorite One of spots. your favorite shots. Yeah. Cool. So that would probably be that and um there's a few that i've taken out at queens i think of a few people that like for me i love when they turn or cut backs like that's kind of my that's your thing my thing yeah. like i don't know i just love watching them like gear up to like make the cut or whatever they're doing um i think there was one that i got of megan godinez of her like cutting and it and she's kind of close to me but 
just that like she's almost like laid back i don't know you like those kind of things you don't really think about until you capture it right and then you see it and you're like holy crap like that's crazy you know? yeah, it's like, like you get home and you plug it in the camera and it's like christmas yeah, yeah. i'm like <laughs> like that whole session was worth it with that one photo awesome you know awesome. so and there's a few more that i've gotten as time has gone on that even i surprised that i've gotten it you know like people at the nose and it's funny because like i've been out there to see like some progressions of yeah. surfers to where they weren't even standing on the nose to now that they are like they are, yeah. you know so it's like it kind of trips me out but there's a few that i've got of matt like have been really cool yeah i mean it's hard to choose <laughs> it's so hard to choose yeah yeah I shoot with a Sony A7 III. Um, I have a Aquatech housing, it's the Edge model. Uh, full controls on the back. I can change pretty much everything, uh, all my settings, because I always shoot in manual now. Um, port, I use a, my go-to lens is a 55, a Zeiss 55 mil, uh, just a buttery lens. I just my favorite i also use it in the shore break um just a different it gives you a different look uh trigger and i always have a gopro that's always on top of my housing so i can get video and photos at the same time but as of late maybe the last six months or so i've been trying to take more video with my actual camera rather than gopro just because of quality and just trying to learn more with my camera um yeah this housing has been through a lot of poundings in the shore break um almost lost, came out of my hand a few times but yeah it's such a good housing and it's definitely worth it um to kind of just go go for the right gear and yeah you know i mean you don't want to mess around with like cheaper stuff right of course it's what you can afford but yeah i definitely love this housing so Aquatec is your go-to brand. Aquatec is your... Yeah, I actually looked into getting a Salty yeah. because their housings are great too. But just certain things with the Salty, like the clip, this was pretty much the go-to, like the clip thing. Right, that's is why so true. It's, yeah, because the, the Salty has all the bolts and just takes too long. And yeah, so that's why I kind of went with this. Um, yeah, it, it's... A really good housing to have awesome and then uh next we'll go ahead and talk about your i'll go ahead and take that i'll talk about your your safety gear yeah uh, you want both or yeah, just both, one both okay. good. and then all right so yeah next let's talk about your water equipment uh fins i use yuccas um pretty much because all the other fins I've used, my feet just can't handle it. If I don't know if it's the rubber or um, I've tried Vipers and the fins and just for my feet, they just don't work. Um, so I use these, uh, it's a company based in California. Oh, okay. But what are those straps on the back do? Uh, so this is fin tethers, so I don't lose them in the water because it has happened before, especially in a shore break. Um, you know, if the wave lands on your feet or whatever, so it'll save it from coming off and then I always put these um, I don't even forget what it's called but it's like the material from the wetsuit yeah so they they put it here so it doesn't rub on your feet so you oh, don't get neoprene. blisters cool. neoprene yeah there you go okay so the shop 662 if you want to put that on your on your fins it works wonders cool. especially so, if you're used to getting blisters and stuff yeah this definitely will help Cool, so big shout out to 662. Yeah, Matt, what's up, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, helmet. I use this only when I shoot in Waikiki, uh, when I shoot surf, because I don't really shoot big, big shore break. You know, like that's way too big for me. So, um, yeah, I've had some close calls and I've seen close calls, so that's what made me of course, just to be safe on the safer side, because you never, you never know. Yeah. yeah, after some serious accidents that I've seen, it's definitely worth the money. And I just have my 
my ID on there if anybody, you know. Cool. So yeah, go ahead and turn that towards us. Let <laughs> us see it. There you go, guys. That's where you can find her on Instagram, and I'll also drop her handle down below. So yeah. what? Uh, tell me about the other stickers you have on your helmet. Oh, it's just random. Uh, Yucca because I use their fins. Yeah. Uh, of course, Birdwell because they're shorts. I use that. And awesome. then Ruka, just my favorite brands. Cool. And then always salty. <laughs> so where where can we find a helmet if we want to get a helmet? Um, you can get it online. I believe it's what, gas dot com. Yeah. And then I, locally, there's a couple stores up north. That's where I got mine. I think it's called the Raging Bull, the one right by Cholos. Not too sure. Yeah. There's a there's a surf shop right by Cholos uh, across the Patagonia. That's where I got mine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And is there uh, so is there any other uh safety gear we need to get to get into surf photography or um, would you say this is pretty much the standard equipment would, you would want to invest in yeah definitely a helmet even if you think like it, ah, it's not worth it get it because there have been people that on even small days that you know get hurt and it may not be your fault it could be the surfer that don't know what they're doing right so to save your you know just get a helmet <laughs> right and fin like you need fins and for me, like fins, even in shore break in small surf, yeah. I'll use fins because you never know what the current's gonna do or it might just pick up on you, when, you know? So you don't really know, just, just be safe. 